Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about the LCS League of Legends uh, opening day slate. Um, it's exciting as we have um, both LPL, LCK, LPL in China, LCK in Korea, and then LEC in Europe um, all launched their spring splits. Um, LCS is starting today. Uh, you know, as you guys, for those of you who may not know, the LCS um, is the North American region where the tournament takes place in the U.S. Um, so it's it's exciting. It's going to be in California. Today we have a special uh, opening day on Thursday, um, 2 p.m. Pacific time and 5 p.m. Eastern time. So it's very exciting. So I'm just going to go through my overall power rankings and then kind of look at the first slate of the LCS spring split that happens later today and yeah, make some predictions and hopefully, you know, we can kind of brainstorm about who we think will perform well this, this split and today and kind of go from there. Hopefully it will be a profitable slate for all of us. And yeah, so let's dive in. So LCS, <clears throat> again, it's the 10 team uh, league. Um, it's a very, uh, you know, compared to, let's say, LPL, LCK, and LEC, it's not quite the quality of competition or the level of competition is not, as, you know, not that great. But this this offseason, there have been a lot of players uh, that came into the LCS, um, or I guess that signed with the teams in the LCS, rather. So, you know, this offseason was very spicy. Um, I think it's going to hopefully uplift um, the quality and the level of competition, but also the popularity of the LCS in North America. Because I've heard or I've read some articles that they're cutting some, you know, money and funding and stuff like that for, um, from the LCS. And it's sad that, you know, that's happening. So hopefully, you know, this gets them going a little bit and hopefully by next year, you know, the popularity comes back up to the point where, People were genuinely excited about watching the LCS or going to the LCS matches. So anyway, enough of that. So let's dive in. So as you can see here on my um, notepad, here are my power rankings. Just after looking at the rosters and after looking at the teams and after looking at how they performed last season, given some of the players or a lot of the players are not with the same team, but, you know, just like my pure analytics standpoint i think this is kind of what i came up with um cloud nine i think will have a very successful year this year um obviously they have kept most of their key players in fudge and the top lane and blabber and jungle and then berserker which i who i think will step up his game again this year uh and last year he was great i mean he was one of the best 80 carries in the LCS um, and co coming from Korea two years ago, I think he's adjusted and assimilated perfectly with the team. And in the LCS scene, I think he's great. I mean, his personality is great. As you see, like on the camera after the matches, post game interviews and comments and stuff like that. And that his teammates really like being with him and playing with him. I just feel like one ear under his belt with fudge and blabber coming, um, returning to the team, I expect really big things for Cloud Nine, so I I have Cloud Nine and and my first in the first place of my my power rankings. And Zaven, you know, he converted to being a support um from being an AD carry, and he's done a really good job. And his synergy with Berserker is only gonna get better now that they have played together for a while. Now the mid lane is a, something that I'm a little concerned about with Diplex, but. We'll see what happens. I think as long as he is serv serviceable, I think Cloud Nine should be fine. You know, given that every single, every other lane, really, Cloud Nine should win. All right, the next one is on my list is Evil Geniuses. This, this is a very interesting one. I think EG had a kind of a like a down year last year. Unfortunately, I think Evil Geniuses will will is gonna perform really well, just kind of for the same reasons as Cloud Nine that I just talked about with the similar. Um, players or, or almost all the players um, coming back for EG and 
Now, someday in the top lane, and Inspired was the best jungler in my opinion, best best performing jungler in 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 the in, in the LCS last last year. Um, and then Jojo Pion in the mid lane, who's been a little bit inconsistent for my taste, but I think he's gonna fit in really well for this team. I think FBI had a little bit of a down year as well, and replacing Danny, who was really good for EG, I think. Um, I think he'll be fine. And and I think the fact that Vulcan is there, I think he was probably the best support player in, in the LCS last year, even over core, core JJ. I think Evil Genius is his setup for success, just like Cloud9 is. Um, I think they should perform. Both teams should perform right away. So I think like those two teams are in their own tier, like tier S or tier A, however you want to name it. And then the next one for me is FlyQuest. I'll just talk about the first five um, teams and then kind of go through the last five pretty quickly because I don't want to make this video too lengthy. But FlyQuest is a very interesting one. I think they had the probably the best offseason probably of any team, any any team in the whole world, in my opinion. I think they've been bringing in Vikla. <laughs> From the LCK, who was probably like one of the top five mid laners in the LCK. And then Prince probably, I think he finished second in the overall MVP rankings or MVP polling in the L LCK in Korea. I mean, you, you guys know how many great elite players there are in the LCK. And Prince was amazing. Like he's a superstar. He's a stud. Vikla, on the other hand, I think he's really good, but I don't think he's quite a superstar. But obviously, coming from Korea, they're gonna they're not gonna have any language issues. Where Impact, you know, he's been in the LCS scene for a long time, and he's not considered an import. He can be a translator between Korean and English. He speaks both, and we'll see. You know, I think Winsome is actually starting today for FlyQuest. Um, given that Ila hasn't gotten his visa yet. But either way, I mean, the, you have four four out of five players that can speak Korean, but Spika is the only one. But, you know, and, and I understand he's in the critical position role at jungle, but I just feel like Spika is very aggressive jungler when he can be. At least that's how he was for TSM when he really tried to put his team on his back at TSM to carry his <laughs> His very, very untalented team on his back to win those games. But I think Spika will perform very much uh, very well for this team. I think he meshes well with Prince, who likes aggressive jungler and who likes to make aggressive plays. And I just feel like that's a very, very, that's a recipe. That's the combination between jungle and AD carry in the current meta that will perform, perform really, really well in the LCS. So I really have him fly quest really high as high as third on my power rankings. And there's a good chance that I think they can win it all like in the LCS. So as long as Spika like really carries his team, uh, you know, at the jungle position, I think every, every other lane should, should be really good. I think Vikla where he was only like a top five, like I said, mediocre or just good. Um, mid laner in the in Korea, I think he is probably the best mid laner in the LCS because in the LCS, really, like mid laners, probably that's probably the that's probably the position that is the weakest in the mid lane in the LCS, and I think Vikla comes in first as the best mid laner in the LCS. And then Team Liquid is an interesting one, as you guys see. Uh, you know, they joke that it's a T LCK. Uh, basically joking that all five of the starters or, or, or the players, I guess, on this team can speak Korean and they have a, a Korean speaking coach um, and they have a Korean speaking assistant coach. <laughs> so it's ba basically, you know, a, an LCK team in the LCS. I mean, I think, you know, despite the fact that some of these players are kind of washed up or not have not proven themselves to be elite players, I mean, I just think it, it has a lot of potential. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But Summit in the top lane, I think he is one of the probably one of the top three top laners. And then Piosek coming from coming over from the LCK, you know, he, he is a world champion, you know, who won the worlds with DRX, but now he's signed with 
<laughs> Team Liquid in DLCS. Um, so I think he's been a little bit too inconsistent for my taste. But obviously, you guys saw in the world, he was lights out. I mean, when he is on, he is on. He loves to make plays, and I think that will perform really well in DLCS. He just might be better than any other jungler um, in DLCS. Maybe, maybe other than Bat Blabber, I don't know. Or inspired, so we'll see. I think they're definitely the top three junglers in my opinion. But PLC can also, I mean, he's he's also shown that he can be like rock bottom if he doesn't perform well. So there's a good chance that he might get benched. So I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I think that Summit, Piosic, and then that's the that's a really good combo there. And then Harry and Yun in the mid lane and the AD carry position are a little bit, you know, worrisome there. But they all speak. They both speak Korean. I think one's Korean-American, one's Korean-Australian. But, you know, who knows? We'll see what happens. I think Piosic and Summit will make them better. And having Core JJ, who's been in the LCS for a long time, he knows what's up. I think that will help them um, to be good. But I think at the beginning, I think there will be some struggles, in my opinion, for TL. So that's why I have them in four, in the fourth spot on my power rankings. And then in the fifth spot is Team Liquid. Team Liquid's uh, roster is um, – no, 100 Thieves. I'm sorry. 100 Thieves is the fifth spot. Um, where is it? Okay. So, okay. So this is a very interesting one because double lift – as you guys know, um, is one of the probably top three greatest players of all time in the LCS, along with Bjergsen, who's in the mid lane for 100 Thieves. These two veterans playing with Closer, who is a very good jungler, and Tenacity, who just like, I mean, he is probably one of the top prospects in the top lane, um, as, as well as Busio in the support position. So I think it's a very good combo. I think bringing on two veterans, you know, coupled with like uh, two um, proven players in the academy level, and then closer who's been who's proven himself um, to be a really good jungler in the LCS the last couple of years. I just feel like, yeah, I mean, I think that's a good combo. I think Thunder Hundred Thieves has a good potential, but I'm just a little bit worried about Bjergsen and Double Lift not being able to kind of fit into the current meta and carry the team because somebody's got to be able to carry this team. I think Bjergsen plays, likes to play a lot more of a utility role. And I don't know how double lift will fare, especially going up against like really, really good AD carries like in the LCS now with Prince for fly quest. And I guess FBI maybe, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting, I think uh berserker, like I think, those two guys, Prince and Berserker, are definitely better than Double Lift. So I don't know how Double Lift performs after setting out, you know, coming out of the retirement. So we'll see what happens there. But Tenacity is going to be an interesting one. I think he definitely has, he definitely is willing. And same for Closer. They're both definitely willing to carry the team. But unfortunately, I just feel like it's not really the top jungle meta at the moment it's the ad carry has to really carry the team and team fights and late in the game um in this current meta so that's why i favor these cloud nine and fly quest uh teams over 100 thieves but you know i just the 100 thieves definitely has the talent and the experience to be able to perform really well in the lcs and then the next like tier c i guess though so that those three teams are tier b for me and then tier C is CLG, Dignitas, and Golden Guardians, and Immortals, and TSM. And I will talk about those five teams probably in the next video because I don't want to make this video too lengthy. But that's the power rankings that I have for you guys. Um, Cloud9, Evil Geniuses, I think clearly will be really good. FlyQuest, maybe in tier A. I don't know because I really love Prince. And then we'll see how Spica performs with these Korean-speaking players. Um, and then, yeah, and then and then uh, I kind of explained the rest for TL and 100 Thieves. So let me know if you guys have any questions or disagree with some of these rankings, but that's a, it'll be interesting to talk about those. All right, and then today's matchups, the first day of the LCS. Um, 100 Thieves versus Cloud9, right? So, okay, so right off the bat, we have a pretty good matchup here. I mentioned that Cloud9 is going to do really well. Um, I do think Cloud9 should be able to beat 100 Thieves. 
with Bjergsen and double lift, yeah, I'm not sure like if they're gonna perform like really, really well right off the bat. Like just coming into the new team, coming out of that um retirement for double lift, um, I wasn't, sh- I'm not quite sure, but I do think Tenacity can definitely perform well against Fudge, and then Blabber is a little bit better than Closer, but Closer can hold his own for sure. And the midline is a little bit the one that I'm worried about, but Bjergsen is like not the type of a carry player once he used to be. So I'm not too concerned about the, the you know, um, uh, maybe like a, probably the weakest link, weakest point for Cloud9 there. So I just feel like it comes down to the bottom lane, Berserkers, Ven versus Doublelift and Busio. I think Cloud9 is going to win this. I think Cloud9 should win this. Uh, I'm going to say prediction, Cloud9 wins. I do think this will be like medium kill upside, just given the fact that like Bjergsen and Doublelift probably don't like to give up a lot of kills. They like to play a cut back a little bit and play a little more conservatively. And I just feel like that's probably how it's going to go. But uh, there's a good chance that Tenacity and Closer play aggressive and give up a lot of kills on the top side of the map which can definitely happen because they both like to play aggressively. And D- Dplex, um, I'm not quite sure um, how he likes to play, but either way, I think Bjergsen likes to play a little more conservatively than most people's players in, in the game. So I think kill upside is medium to low. All right, Golden Guardians versus Evil Geniuses is an interesting one because we can't, we didn't really talk about Golden Guardians, but I told you how I'm so excited about Evil Geniuses. I think they're the top two teams, um, top two team in, in the power ranking on the power rankings. And then Golden Golden Guardians, yeah, I mean, I think they have River in the jungle, Licorice uh, in the top lane. I'm not too excited about. Gory in the mid lane, and then Stixe, who's been in DLCS for a very, very long time, just moving from one team to another, and who he same same as well. So I don't know. I mean, I just feel like Evil Geniuses should handedly win this. Um, I'm sure Vegas Odds has Evil Geniuses win this one. I think Kill Upside is pretty high. So I, I'm going to say... High to medium, just because Evil Geniuses likes to be play very aggressively, and Golden Guardians, from what I remember from last season, likes to play aggressively as well. Not as not as aggressively as Evil Geniuses, but given River and Gory and Stixay, uh, Stixay not so much. But River and Gory like to play aggressively as well. So I I just feel like the kill upside is pretty good in this matchup, and I think Evil Geniuses should win this. And there'll be a, probably a chalky uh team to stack on the slate because they're the clear favorite amongst the 10 teams uh, on the slate. So I think Evil Geniuses ownership is going to be high, but I think that's that's a good pick, you know, for the optimal lineup. Now, FlyQuest versus TL. Right off the bat, we have a, the top five matchup, in my opinion. FlyQuest with Prince in the AD carry position. I really like them. And then Team Liquid, as mentioned, now like a Korean team. But I'm I'm a little worried about Harry and Yun um, for Team Liquid. I just feel like FlyQuest should win this pretty easily, I think. Unless Spica performs really poorly, but I just don't think so. I think the bottom lane, Prince and Winsome, should be able to fare well against uh, Yon and Core JJ. Vikla should win against Harry. And then, like I said, Spika, when he's good, when he's surrounded by good players, I think he's a great jungler. I just feel like Piosik, I mean, may- maybe he's going to perform as well as he did in the Worlds, but that's really a, that's a really hard ask of Piosik, just given how inconsistent he was, especially early in the season for DRX in the in last season. So with the new team and with some language issue, potentially issues, potentially, even though they're all, they all can understand Korean, I'm not quite sure if Team Liquid has what it takes to win right off the bat coming into the season. So I'm going to have to go with FlyQuest. I'm not quite sure what Vegas has. I haven't looked at the Vegas odds. This is purely just from my analytical standpoint. So let's see if Vegas agrees with me. But I'm going to say Fly wins. Kill upside is actually with Piosig likes 
liking to play aggressively and same for Spica and Prince. I think this is high to medium as well. So I think that's going to be an interesting pick. I think FlyQuest is going to be a dark horse coming into the LCS spring split. Now the next matchup is CLG versus Dignitas. I think that's gonna that's a very I wouldn't call it interesting because I say that about most matches. Um, both teams are really bad. I mean, these that last two matches, CLG, Dignitas, and TSM Immortals, all four of these teams are probably at the bottom tier of the LCS this year coming into the season. I just feel like, you know, there's not very uh, much hope for these teams to like qualify for the worlds to speak. I think they can, I think one of these four teams can definitely like outperform their expectations. So let's look at um, what is very important in, in, in the current meta, as mentioned, I think it's the jungle and the 80 carry and support position. So basically jungle and the bottom lane. Um, so let's see LG versus Dignitas. I'm going to see contracts, Palaf, Fox, Luger, Poom. CLG and roster is very weak. So Santorin, who's been good. I mean, like serviceable. Um, Spawn and Biofrost or Ignar, either one. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to go with... Dignitas, but... I'm not 100% sure. I think, like I said, both teams are shit. Um, but I think Santorin is better than Contracts, but not by much, right? So I just feel like that's going to be a very interesting one. Um, I do think Dokla and Armut uh, have had very, very um, underwhelming season last season. And I think that really is going to be the weakest point. For both of these teams, I think Armut have has had very good, you know, success in a split. Like for, I think it was Mad Lions in the LEC before coming over to the LCS. But I just feel like he had he was like probably the bottom one of the bottom three um, top laners in the LCS last year, and I just feel like he will need to bounce back for Dignitas to be able to have a good chance to win that. But I think Santorin, like I said, is a mediocre jungler, but Spawn is not very good. Um, but at the same time, like Contracts is not very good, but Luger is pretty good. So I think at either of those roles, like um Yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting one, I think. Dignitas, bottom lane's not very great. Ignore. Has not shown great things. Um, I think contracts. Yeah, that's a hard one. I'm not sure which one that I'm going to go with. I think I'm going to go with whoever the underdog is. I think just from the betting, pure betting standpoint, I think the ownership will be lower for uh, the underdog. So we'll see what happens there. Um I mean that's a cop out answer, right? Like from just from just from looking at the roster, I mean Dignitas, maybe. So I don't know. I think it's a toss up. Both teams are really bad. <laughs> but then Jensen is so bad too. Like he was so bad. I just feel like until he gains back his form even remotely close to it from like three, four years ago, I just feel like Dignitas has no chance. Um Maybe I'm spending just way too much time trying to analyze these players without even seeing them together for the, you know, even one time, like today is going to be the first day of these players play together um, at a competitive level in front of like fans and stuff like that. I mean, I just, yeah, I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go with CLG because I think, I bet CLG is the underdog. I think kill upside is probably high to medium as well. CLG games last year have notoriously been pretty high in kills. Um, so I just that's the only reason I said it. Um, and some of the players are back from CLG from last year, so there's some some consistency and some merit to that uh that data. TSM.
All right, TSM versus Immortals. Like I said, both teams are bad again. Um, first of all, Im Immortals brought on was it Ken V now and Tactical, who was pretty bad. A Blaze Olive, Golden Guardians, he used to be on, and then TSM now is Solo, Boogie, Maple, Neo, and Chime. Neo was okay, I thought last year, so that kind of gives me a little bit of hope. But tactical, yeah, I mean, who's better, right? Tactical or Neo? I think tactical is probably a little bit better, but Neo has that upside that I look for in AD carries and also being um the underdog. But at the same time, I just feel like tactical <laughs> was not good either. Um, I do think... I'm sorry. I do think um, TSM has a better roster overall. So, yeah, I'm just going to have to go TSM. I think teams are shit. I'm sorry. But, like, I want to analyze, but I can't because both teams are really bad. Um, again, I think, I think for DFS purposes, you want to pick whoever the underdog is and kind of see from there. I, I think after this weekend or after one or two games in, like we'll kind of know how far the team is in like being able to learn, like having, you know, like learning or identifying their playing identity as a team and kind of gauge how um, talented these players are and, I mean, I can kind of see the potential as a team once I see like some plays made by two or three of these players or in team fights, they know how to communicate and they have an identity, how they want to attack and what their weakest points are and strengths are and stuff like that. And I just feel like we'll have a better sense of how good these teams can be and are um, after those couple games. I think the kill upside is probably medium to low because Immortals last year was um did not produce enough kills, but then it's a new play, new roster, right? So I just feel like you know you never know. And Maple did not die much last year um for TSM. So we'll see what happens there. But all right. So anyway, so yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Um I think, like I said, evil geniuses is gonna be a chalky, chalky team to stack. And then after that, um probably confident. In Cloud9 and Team Liquid, um, no, not Team Liquid, FlyQuest winning. I think Cloud9 and uh, FlyQuest, there are a lot of high things to expect, um, big things to expect. So we'll see how that pans out. Um, I did point out that I think for 100 Thieves, I think it was, no, for FlyQuest, Isla has a visa issue, so Winsome is going to start. So don't play Isla. So, yeah. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, please, please hit the like button below and subscribe to our channel. Otherwise, yeah, good luck out there and have a good one. Bye-bye.